Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode in our item inspection series. Previously we've got the, so we can pick up an item and drop an item. In this episode we're going to go into the meat of the series and that is actually the inspection mode itself. So how do we enter this mode and also the controls to control the item in that three dimensional space. So at the moment we've got it so that on the interact with we're checking whether the player has a currently held item. If they don't have one we take to pick up one. If we do have one, we're going to inspect it. Okay, so the same interact event will happen for both items. It will both ways, both pick up and inspect. It will just change based on what's currently being held. So the start inspection code will here will trigger. So to start the inspection, there's quite a lot to this, but let's start break it down into steps. The first thing we need to do is turn off the control from the player character and put it onto this item. So we're going to in, uh, disable input and we disable input on the target which is the player character so we just drag the player value out and the player controller is just get player controller and then we from that same player controller we're going to enable input and that go on to itself okay so now this item will receive inputs from the player controller we then want to set it a certain position and the position we're going to set it is very similar to the drop item here except that we're not going to tell it to simulate the physics so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code here control C and I'm going to paste it oh, here okay so now that's going to set it out in front of the player character so let's see how that looks in game the item and then push E again. We are done, we can go to our player character now. And what we've got here on the interact function, this is the actual interact from the player, this is the one that's going to start all off. This interact from the player is looking at the lookout actor and telling it to interact with it. However, if we're not looking at an actor because we've really got one in our hand, we want to check the is not valid and tell it to interact with but this time the target is going to be the currently held item. So if it isn't looking at anything, it will try and interact with whatever is currently being held. The player character will be itself, so I'm drag that into that like so. Hit compile and let's test this out in game. So we'll pick up the item, push E again, and there is out in front of the player character. Now I can't move because we turned off our player's inputs. So now we've got to do is make it so this responds to controls. So the first control we need to set up is on the item. We'll make it rotate. So on my event graph, I'm going to use the turn and look up sort of uh, functions we've already got to control the movement of the mouse of the the character. If you're doing it with a mouse, uh, let's actually just do it with a mouse. It save a lot of effort and time. We'll just do a left mouse button. And on the left mouse button, we're going to set a variable, and the variable is is uh, rotating. And we're going to drag that out and set that to be true. And when we release it, we're going to set it to be false. Next, we're going to go the mouse X, and the mouse X is going to rotate it in the horizontal fashion. So we can use the axis value on here to multiply it by a certain value to make it rotate. To do that, we need to first of all check if we're rotating is true. We only want to do it when we're holding down the left mouse button. And then what we'll do then is take this axis value, multiply it by a float. Um, and let's say minus five. I think it's minus five. I think it has to be a negative. We'll double check that in a minute. Make it minus five. We're then going to combine that to the rotation of the axis at the moment. So combine rotators. And this will go into the second one. So we can split the second one. And we're affecting the yaw of this. So go to the yaw. And the rotation at the start here is get 
rotation. Get actor rotation. Like so. We're going to set actor rotation to our code there. Okay, so I click compile and let's just test that out. So I pick up the item, E again, left mouse button down, and I can rotate it left and right. Next is up and down movement. So that's basically the same code, just different axis. So I can copy all of this and paste that in and do mouse Y. And we multiply the axis value again by minus five. But this time it's going to go into the pitch, I believe it is. Compile. Let's test that out. There you go. I can move it up and down, left and right. Cool. Okay, so next we're going to work on our zooming in and out. So we're going to make a new variable called zoom level. And we'll make it an integer. And we're going to set a default value for this to be 10. Okay. So it's going to range between 0 and 20. Um, and this will work on the wheel up and down on the mouse. So go mouse, wheel, up. Do up first. And we're going to take the zoom level. Get. We're going to add a 1 to it. We're going to then clamp it with a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of 20. And we're going to set that to the new zoom level. We're then going to check if the zoom level is less than 20. If it is, we're going to create a branch and plug that in. So if it's true and it is less than 20, we can allow the zoom to happen. So to get the zoom, we can do basically what we did in the start inspect. So this same code here, we're going to copy this. Copy and paste that in here. The difference being is this multiplied down here. Let's just move this about so it doesn't get in the way of each other. There you go. So let's multiply here. We're going to take the zoom level and multiply that by a float. And if 200 is the default setting, so is at middle range, and zoom level at default is 10, so 200 divided by 10 gives you 20. Therefore, we're going in increments of 20. So plug that into there like so. And now our zoom level will affect the range that we can move. Now we're doing exactly the same uh, for mouse down, mouse scroll down. So I'm going to copy pretty much all of this and we'll change bits if we need to. And paste that into and press there. So here what we're changing is the first of all the addition at the start. That will now be a subtraction. So minus 1. And then the comparison, we'll check if it's greater than. And the value is going to be 1. And the rest of it, I think, is going to stay the same. Hit compile. And we can close that and test that out. Pick up the item. Inspect it. And then with the mouse wheel, I can scroll up and scroll down. So I can get really close. I rotate it around really far. Rotate it around. So forth. Excellent. So the next job is to make it so that when you interact with it again, it will return back to just holding the key or item, whatever it may be. So to go into your item parent, and because this thing has the inputs allowed on it already, it's enabled the inputs onto it, we can just call that event interact. Like we have on the player character, exactly the same and when we do here we're going to create another function called 
stop inspect and we're going to call that on this thing here so on stop inspect we are going to do a couple of things first of all we're going to tell it to move back to the player character's hand okay so well actually first thing we do is turn off the inputs on it so we're going to do disable input on itself from the player controller and then we're going to enable input back to the player character so drag the player value out to there we're then going to tell it to go back to this hand so to do that we do is set relative location back to zero 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 and we also set actor relative rotation back to zero 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 hit compile and let's go back to play pick it up push e, uh, push e into inspect push e again it goes back to the player's hand and i can move again and if he sets it back to its normal rotation and location See? and i can drop it so And now we have the inspection. So what we do now is start work on our user interface stuff. So that will get it so that we can see what item we're looking at, what item we're picking up, the inspection UI, all that stuff in the next episode. So join us then for that next part, which you can find on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. With just $1 a month, you can get access to that next part right now, plus many, many other videos. Thanks again to all my supporters uh, for supporting me in this endeavor and uh, we'll be making these videos without you guys, so thank you so much. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like it and comment below for anything you'd like to see going forward in the channel. Always looking out for uh, uh, ideas for what people want to see. So thanks again and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.